Hi, I'm Brad Curry, tutoring high school biology. Today's topic, protists, part one. Alright, now, protists are just about the most diverse group of life on the planet. So we're going to have to split this up into two lessons. But first up, a word on protists. Protists are often considered to be kingdom protista, a bunch of eukaryotic unicellular forms of life. Now, that is becoming very wrong as we discover more and more data about protists. We used to think of them as protista, oh, animal like, plant like, fungus like, and not really like anything else. Not so anymore. Protists are actually more ancient than, well, those forms of life, and it's not so much an animal like protist as protist like animals. We're going to take a look at some of the newer forms of classification that we're using for protists right now, because that fifth kingdom, protista, is very rapidly becoming chopped up. Alright, now first up, the archozoa. These are the oldest form of protists. These are the ones that evolved first. A lot of people say that they don't have mitochondria. Those that say they do have mitochondria refer to these organelles that don't have the electron transport chain, don't have their own DNA, and don't have a second membrane. If they are really mitochondria, they perform some sort of energy creation that is very different from what we think of mitochondria as doing. However, that may be a point to the no mitochondria side, but there are genes in there that code for mitochondrial proteins. So maybe a point for the mitochondria side. We're not quite sure. We're still studying this. All right, next up, euglenozoa. Two groups in here, euglenoids. These are mixotrophic. That means they are both heterotrophic and autotrophic. They can perform photosynthesis and take in their own food. Here's a quick diagram of one. Flagellum, which propels it through whatever substance it's in. Eye spot, which helps it guide toward light. And chloroplasts, which will perform photosynthesis. And of course, the nucleus, since these are eukaryotic. Alright, next up in here, kinetoplastids. These have a structure known as a kinetoplast. That's why they're kinetoplastids, which is just a large mitochondria with very organized DNA. Next up, the alveoli. All these have alveoli. These are hollow sacs just beneath the membrane. This includes dinoflagellates with two flagella, and these are a reddish brown color. They do this to perform photosynthesis, but they take in light of a different wavelength as plants. These are often responsible for red tides. Some phases of dinoflagellates, if they multiply like crazy, they can create a red tide. Don't go out during a red tide. Alright, next up, the AP complexins, which I always thought was some scientist's joke about the AP um, curriculum. But these have something called the AP complex, which allows it to actually penetrate a cell. A good example of this is the plasmodium, which causes malaria. This particular AP complexin will invade blood cells. They just go right in and stay there. Then they'll come out which will provoke an immune response, a fever, and then they'll fade back into the cells, and they'll come out again, so on and so forth, until the host is finally dead. Of course, they can also parasitize another mosquito that happens to bite you, and, well, that's just AP complexes, penetrating cells all the time. All right, last up, ciliates. These are covered with cilia, which are kind of like miniature flagella. Gives them a kind of fuzzy appearance, but all these will beat in more or less unison, kind of like oars to a very large boat, to propel ciliates through whatever substance they're in. A good friend of ours, the paramecium, is one of them. All right, to recap. Protists are often thought of as kingdom protista, the animal-like protist, plant-like protist, fungus-like protist, and those that are not like anything else. This concept is very rapidly disintegrating as we discover DNA evidence and perform structural studies, because protists are actually older than we are. Now, the oldest of all forms of the protist is the archozoa. Some say they don't have mitochondria, some say they do. Those that say they do point to structures with no electron transport chain, no membrane, and no, no DNA. If these do have mitochondria, they are heavily modified. All right, next up, euglenozoa. These consist of the euglenoids and the kinetoplastids. Euglenoids are mixotrophic. That means they can do photosynthesis as well as take in their own food. They have flagella to propel them through whatever substance they're in, and an eye spot to help guide them towards light. Kinetoplastids have a kinetoplast, which is a large mitochondria with very organized DNA. Next up, the alveolata. All of these have alveoli, hollow sacs underneath the membrane. And here we have the dinoflagellates, which have two flagella, are brownish-red, and perform photosynthesis. The AP complexins, which have the AP complex structure, which allows them to penetrate cells. And lastly, ciliates. These are covered with cilia, small things like flagella, that'll beat in unison like ores to propel the ciliates through whatever they're in. Alright, that's all for now. Get on Brian Pierre. See you next time.